Welcome back to Zach's Garage. In today's episode, we are going to be rebuilding the gimbal housing on my Mer Cruiser Alpha 1 Outdrive. And let me briefly go over the list of things I'm replacing in this video for you guys to expect. First, the gimbal bearing, U-joint bellows, exhaust bellows, shifting cable bellows, the water hose, the oil line, and I'm also repairing the speedometer tubing and the trim cinder wires. And with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So for removing the gimbal bearing, I am actually able to hit mine out with a hammer from the back side because I have my gimbal housing removed from the boat right now. Now I know for a lot of you, you may not have this option. And if that's the case, you're really going to want to get yourself a slide hammer in order to remove the gimbal bearing and that will make quick work of the job. And even though I only show a few seconds of hitting the hammer here, it actually took a lot longer to get the bearing loose for me. So just be prepared for a pain in the butt. Now for removing this retaining sleeve, again, I'm just hammering it out from the back of the gimbal housing. For most of you, you just need something that can kind of hook it to start pulling it or bend it in. You can even use pliers or like a flathead screwdriver. Now you can see I have my gimbal housing rotated upwards as far as it can and I'm holding it with the rope. This is to give me access underneath here to the worm gear clamp to loosen up for the exhaust bellows. One other thing I wanted to show you quickly is that on my outdrive you can see the speedometer tube here is actually broken. It got torn. And there is also a little plastic clip here holding the hose and I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Before you're able to remove the water hose, you need to undo these two bolts back here so that you're able to remove a little rubber stopper that it has holding this whole tube in. And there's the rubber stopper I was talking about that comes out. And it may be stuck pretty darn good in there, but eventually you'll be able to wiggle it free. After that, I decided to remove this retaining screw from the shifting lever. And I know it's probably starting to seem like I am jumping around a lot, but that's because I am. Going into this video, I did not know the exact order that I was going to have to remove everything. So I'm just showing you the order that I did it in. And after removing that retaining screw, you can pull the shifting cable out of that lever a little bit, but you still can't pull the cable all the way through. I'll get to that later on. Moving forward, the next piece I did was the trim cinders. And this is just a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these. And I thought at first I should pay attention to how they were rotated for the calibration of the sensors. But to be honest with you, in the end, I had to recalibrate them anyways. So you might have to do the same. Now after you've got these trim cinders off, it does expose the hinge pin bolt uh, to get out next. But to do that, you're going to need to use this fancy bit. And this is something you're going to have to buy in order to get these out. It is only about $11 on Amazon. And let me just say, these things are going to be in there tight. You're going to need a pretty long breaker bar to break them free. And probably a friend to help you. And I know I just made it look fast, but you're probably going to need a few beers to get these out and a lot of patience. It takes some time. And after I got those bad boys out, the next thing I went ahead and did was remove this safety wire that's connecting the bell housing to the gimbal housing. 
And after that, remove this tiny little clamp that's on the bellows for the shifting cable. Now we are actually starting to get closer to having the bell housing separated from the gimbal housing. You can see here I do have the bell housing pushed out a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually pull this wire out of the inside of the U-joint bellows out so that way we're able to move that bellows around a little easier. And after that you should just be able to pull the water hose out of the gimbal housing as you can see I have mine here. And at this point there's only two things holding my bell housing onto the gimbal housing. The oil line and the shifting cable. And I'm just going to go ahead and snip the oil line because I'm going to replace it with some new line. But you don't have to do this if you're wanting to save your oil line. You can actually unhook it from the back of the gimbal housing. But of course I didn't realize this till after I had already snipped my oil line. But after that the only thing holding on that bell housing was just the shift cable. So next I went ahead and removed this plastic coil from the shift cable. Now to be able to slide the shift cable all the way through, we need to do two things. The first is to loosen up this nut here on this cap that's on the end of it. And then second, we need to take a tiny 5 30 seconds wrench and loosen up the set screws that are holding it tight to the plastic piece on the end. Then we are able to slide that plastic piece off the end of the shifting cable and now the shift cable itself is able to completely slide through the bell housing and now we're going to remove this metal piece that's at the end of the shift cable sleeve and this will allow us to pull the whole shift cable sleeve through the gimbal housing. So the sleeve itself does stay attached to the bell housing the whole time. You could unscrew it to disconnect it from the inside of the bell housing but you don't need to. And now that we've got the bell housing completely removed it's time to start removing the bellows from the gimbal housing, starting with the shift bellows. And to get to the worm gear clamp for this, you're going to need to use a flexible screwdriver shaft attachment like this one here. And even though this attachment is flexible, it's still going to be a challenge getting it onto the worm gear clamp. But once you get it started, it stays on there pretty good, so the rest is easy. Now you can also use that flexible extension on the exhaust bellows on this side, but Mercruiser did design a hole in the side of the gimbal housing for you to stick a long flathead screwdriver straight in to do it that way as well. Now at the time, I didn't have a long enough flathead screwdriver to do that, but of course later on I went ahead and bought one on Amazon. And just a quick note here, this metal clip on the bellows was at the bottom, not the top. But now we can go ahead and loosen up the worm gear clamp on the U-joint bellows. And then you should be able to just slide that bad boy right off. And once you have that U-joint bellows out of the way, now you've got access to unscrew this bolt that is holding in the wiring for the trim cinders. And once you've got that off, now these wires should just be able to slide right through the hole. And after you got those wires out of there, at this point, the only thing remaining in the gimbal housing is just the tubing for the speedometer and to remove that there's the nipple for it on the back of the gimbal housing that you can unscrew and then just pull the whole tube through. And after that you are halfway done. We have removed everything from the gimbal housing that we are going to remove. So now before we start rebuilding I'm going to go ahead and clean mine up a bit because it was a bit dirty in there. And I am really glad I took the time to do this because afterwards the gimbal housing was looking pretty darn good. 
But now on with rebuilding and the first thing I'm going to fix is on these trim cinders there was some wiring that was exposed so we needed to repair the shielding on it a little bit and to do that I'm going to use some electrical tape. And I know that's not the best fix but it gets it done and it's going to help these last longer. And after I finished getting those wires wrapped up with electrical tape to make sure they couldn't short out again, I went ahead and just installed those back into the gimbal housing first thing. Now after this, the next thing I decided to install was the new gimbal bearing. Now when you're installing this, the one thing you need to pay attention to is where the grease hole is on the gimbal bearing and where the grease hole is on the gimbal housing and you make sure you line those up because if you don't you might not be greasing it up good and if it rusts over time you'll be in bad shape needing a new gimbal bearing but you see here I've got a fancy tool on my drive alignment shaft that I hammer in really all you need is a 2x4 to hammer in there and just make sure you apply equal pressure but after that, I'm going to go ahead and replace that oil line now. And for getting the old oil line off, go ahead and take a utility knife and try to cut a slit on it, and that'll really help you uh, pull it off. Because I tried my darndest to pull it off without doing that, and I could not do it. So just a little tip for you, cut that slip, and then it should slide off pretty easy. Well, I decided to give you guys a little bit of a break there from hearing my voice nonstop. But as you saw, getting this old water hose off was a pain in the butt. But eventually, we did finally get it off. And again, using a utility knife, uh, go ahead and make a slit on the oil line that's still connected to that bell housing to help get it to slide off a lot easier. And then after we get that old oil line removed, now we can go ahead and cut out our new oil line that's going to replace the old one. And then I'm going to go ahead and install it onto the bell housing. And to secure it, I'm going to use a zip tie. After that you can go ahead and put the metal piece on the other end of the hose that will actually go through the gimbal housing. And the hose will hold on to the piece by itself with just friction alone, but I'm also adding a zip tie to it just to ensure that the hose does not come off. Now back to the water hose, I did go ahead and get a new one and at this point you can go ahead and install that white tubing into the end of the water hose. Now I do jump around a little bit here back to the shift cable. I go ahead and put the bellows on that and let me just tell you putting that bad boy on can be a pain in the butt. I highly recommend using some sort of lubricant whether it's grease or Vaseline or WD-40 just to help you slide that bellows on the end of the cable sleeve. Moving on after this, the next thing I do is go ahead and install the U-joint bellows. And you can see, compared to the old one, just how much better it looks. And I do want to note here, it does tell you on the bellows which side goes on top. And to install it, you're going to want to use some bellows adhesive, and you're just going to want to line the inside edge of that bellows. This U 
joint bellows installed really wasn't that difficult. Of course, the fun part will be whenever we're installing the bell housing, though. So, moving on after that, I'm going to go ahead and install the new exhaust bellows underneath it. Now for repairing the speedometer tubing, I was actually able to reuse the existing tubing and I just used some old quarter inch vinyl tubing I had to connect the two and surprisingly it held an airtight seal that is able to hold pressure. Now for the fun part of reinstalling the bell housing. And the first thing you're going to want to do here is take the shifting cable and snake it through the hole through the gimbal housing. And after this, one mistake that I had realized I had made is that I had already connected the water hose to the bell housing and with it connected to that I was unable to get it into a position on the gimbal housing. So I had to take my water hose back off the bell housing and install that into the gimbal housing first. And you can go ahead and put that rubber sleeve back on to the white tubing. All right, now we are ready to put the bell housing back on. Hold up, there's something I forgot to mention. Before you put the bell housing back on, make sure you have the worm gear clamp for the shift cable bellows already on the shift cable before you get it in there. And don't forget to put these nylon washers back into place in between the bell housing and where it mounts to. This is to help take friction off as it turns up and down. And now you can go ahead and start screwing in the hinge pins. This is just to hold the bell housing in for now and you don't have to get them tightened down all the way yet. Now after that, you're ready to go ahead and connect the U-joint bellows to the bell housing now. And if your hand is small enough, you can just reach in the hole and start pulling the bellows in up and over the lip inside the bell housing. Now this is where things might get a little bit sticky and that's because we need to use that bellows adhesive again inside the bell housing so that way the bellows is going to stick to it really nice and make a nice airtight seal. And I just put the adhesive in the lip in the bell housing and then I just try to pull that bellows further in once it gets all the way into that lip. And it makes a little bit of a mess when I did it. so. I'm not sure if I'm doing it the best way here, but it did work out, so that's what counts. Now after that, you are ready to go ahead and install that retaining sleeve into position to hold the bellows in there forever. And to do this, there is an installation tool you can get, but all it does is just ensures that equal pressure is pushed all the way around the sleeve when you're installing it. You could just find something else to use as well. I don't think you have to have that installation tool. And now you might want to double check reaching your hand in to feel that the bellows is still in there, secured into position, and no part of it slipped out of the lip in the bell housing. Dang it, something else I forgot to tell you is at this point you should go ahead and tighten on the clamp for the water hose to the bell housing, and it is a booger. Now this next part for getting the exhaust bellows on the bell housing can be a bit tricky, and you might want a friend to help you. Now one thing I forgot to show here is how to slide the exhaust bellows onto the bell housing. Now I for one did not want to spend $50 on Mercruiser's exhaust bellows expander tool. 
because it's really just a glorified pair of inverted pliers. So instead what I ended up doing was using a piece of all thread rod with a washer on it with two nuts tightened down on either side and you stick that inside the exhaust bellows and that washer gets a hold of one of the lips of the ripples and you just pull it out till you get it up on the lip of the bell housing. I have also seen people use zip ties tied around the outside of the bellows and they'll use those to pull it onto the bell housing too. Now after that you are pretty much done with all the hard stuff in my opinion. So fast forwarding a bit, once I get my transom assembly back onto the boat, then that's when I go ahead and I finish tightening up those hinge pins, I grease them up, I grease up the new gimbal bearing, and then I also get the shift cable bellows secured onto the gimbal housing. And don't forget to screw on your trim cinders, but calibrating them will be saved for another video. But that is where we're going to end today's episode. If you're still watching, I just want to give you a huge thank you. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribing. But that is it for today. I will see you guys next time.